I want to present you with a coding problem you might have run into before. You have a collection of 2D points and a target point, and are given the task to find the closest point to that target point. You may assume that you already have a function for calculating the distance between two points. It doesn't need to perform well, no need for quad trees or anything fancy. This code shouldn't run for more than 500 points or so. Instead, I want you to write the most straightforward implementation you can think of, one that you think is easy to understand. Now, depending on what language you used to do this, your implementation might be a bit different, but there's a good chance you came up with something that looks like this. And if you didn't know any better, you'd be satisfied with a solution like this. But if you think about it, there is a lot of noise here. It isn't immediately clear we are taking a minimum here until we notice the comparison in the if statement. Also, the float inf and the none assignment feel excessive and don't really explain themselves. Now, what if I told you I could turn all of the above into this? This code is written in Haskell, a language that strictly follows the functional programming paradigm and features a rich type system. You might find this daunting at first, but if you read it out loud, it isn't all that complicated. We take the minimum by comparing the distance to target. The code perfectly explains what it is trying to achieve. We programmers spend more time reading code than actually writing it. In order to build upon or make use of existing code, we need to first understand how exactly it works and what we can expect from it. And even though I don't need to explain to you what a for loop does, understanding what the code is trying to achieve and what assumptions it makes in the process is something that takes a lot of time. Now, I am not going to pursue you to start writing all your code in Haskell or that the whole industry should switch to it. But I do think you should learn the way it works because it forces you into looking at your code in a completely different way, something that sticks with you once you get back to your ordinary programming. In the upcoming series, I will explain the basic principles of Haskell, from pattern matching to lazy evaluation, maybe even the mathematical nightmare that is monads. And I hope that by the end of this series, you'll have learned to look at your code in a different way, and you will find yourself writing code like this in a language you are comfortable with. If you enjoyed this video, like sub, and I'll see you in the next vid.